Welcome to a brief introduction on digital logic waveforms. Within digital electronics, there are only two possible states. These are represented by two voltage levels, one referred to as a high and the other referred to as a low. Combinations of the two states are called codes and are used to represent numbers, alphabetical characters and other types of information. Binary digits. The two-state number system used to represent these states is called binary. It has only two digits, a 0 and a 1. We call a binary digit a bit. Generally, a 1, or high, is represented by a higher voltage level, and a 0, or low, is represented by the lower voltage level. Logic levels. Logic levels refer to the voltages used to represent a 1 or a 0, that is, a high or a low. In an ideal world, we would use one voltage level to represent a high and another voltage level to represent a low. For example, a 5 volt signal represents a high and a 0 volt signal represents a low. In reality, digital circuits are designed to accept high and low signals deviating substantially from these ideal values. For example, in TTL gate circuits, range from 2 to 5 volts for a high logic state and 0 to 0 0.8 volts for a low logic state. Let's illustrate the general range of lows and highs for a digital circuit. The variable VH max represents the maximum high voltage value. VH min represents the minimum high voltage value. VL max represents the maximum low voltage value. VL min represents the minimum low voltage value. Note, the voltage values between VL max and VH min are unacceptable signal voltages for proper operation. Any signal voltage in this range can appear either as a high or a low. This would lead to errors. Digital waveforms. Digital waveforms consist of a number of high and low levels or states changing back and forth. Waveforms are made up of a series of pulses. There are two types of pulses. A positive going pulse is generated when the signal voltage or current goes from its normally low level to its high level and then back to its low level. A negative going pulse is generated when the signal voltage or current goes from its normally high level to its low level and back to its high level. These pulses are what we call ideal pulses and they transition from low to high or high to low instantaneously. In practice this will never happen as there will always be a time required to transition between states. That said, for most digital work we can assume ideal pulses. So what does a non-ideal pulse look like? A non-ideal pulse can exhibit some or all of the following characteristics. Overshoot, ringing, droop, undershoot, rise time and fall time. Stray, inductive and capacitive effects can produce overshoot and ringing. Stray capacitive and circuit resistance can cause droop due to the formation of RC circuits with a low time constant. When discussing non-ideal pulse characteristics, the rise time, T or, refers to the time required for a pulse to go from its low level to its high level. The fall time, TF, refers to the time required for a pulse to go from its high level to its low level. Normally, these times are measured from the time taken for the pulse amplitude to transition from 10% to 90% in the case of rise time and from 90% to 10% of the pulse amplitude in the case of fall time. The pulse width, TW, is a measure of the duration of the pulse and is defined as the time interval between the 50% points on the rising and falling edges. Waveform characteristics. Digital system waveforms are comprised of a series of pulses. Waveforms can be classified as either non-periodic, one that does not repeat itself at fixed intervals, it may be composed of randomly different time intervals between the pulses and or randomly different pulse widths, or a periodic waveform, one that repeats itself at a fixed interval called a period T. The rate at which a periodic waveform repeats itself is referred to as its frequency, f, and is measured in hertz. The frequency, f, of a digital pulse waveform is the reciprocal of the period. f is equal to 1 over t. We can rearrange the relationship to calculate the period, t. t is equal to 1 over f. An important characteristic of a periodic digital waveform is its duty cycle. This represents the ratio of the pulse width, tw, to the period, t. It can be expressed as a percentage. Duty cycle is equal to the pulse width divided by the period multiplied by 100%. Let's look at a sample question involving a digital waveform. The waveform shown contains a portion of a periodic digital waveform. Time 
along the x-axis is measured in milliseconds. For the waveform shown, let's calculate the period, frequency and duty cycle. The period t is measured from the edge of one pulse to the corresponding edge of the next pulse. In this case, the period t is measured from leading edge to leading edge as shown. In this example, we can see that the period t is equal to 10 milliseconds. Frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So frequency f is equal to 1 divided by t, which is 1 divided by 10 milliseconds, which gives you 100 hertz. To calculate the duty cycle, we need to determine the pulse width, tw, from the periodic digital waveform. Here we can see that the pulse width is 1 millisecond. So the duty cycle is calculated from the ratio of the pulse width, tw, to the period, t. And this can be expressed as a percentage. Duty cycle is equal to pulse width divided by period multiplied by 100%, which is equal to 1 millisecond divided by 10 milliseconds multiplied by 100%, which equals 10%. This gives a duty cycle of 10% in this example. <laughs>